Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher. Welcome to All About Canadian Books. Very exciting today because we are going to find out the story behind A Knife in the Sky. I have Haitian Quebecois author, award-winning Marie Sally Agnon, and her award-winning translator, also a writer and an editor, editor Katia Grubasek. Welcome to All About Canadian Books, ladies. Um, Thank you, Crystal. It's my, it's my pleasure. Before we start, I was wondering if one of you could just let us know a little bit more about what the book is about. I'll let you talk, Katia. D'accord, j'y vais. But um, A Knife in the Sky, um, Femme autant des carnassiers, um, takes place uh, as a way to to create a fictional memory around a factual memory that maybe I'll let Marie Sally discuss a little bit after. Um, there was a journalist during the first Duvalier regime who was brutally silenced, um, as many, as so many women, men, children, um, young people were were also during during that regime during the subsequent during when while his son was in power. Um, and this looks at those two uh, those two times in history in Haiti. And so uh, Mika is the character of the journalist in the first half of the novel. And she's really struggling with how to say everything that needs to be said at a moment when silence reigns, you know, by by knife and at the by at the tip of a gun, at the um, tip of a rifle. Um, and her her voice is so it's a it's a journalistic effort that she's making as well. But of course, she's also she's also living through this, and so she's also terrified herself because by speaking, she's putting herself and her family in danger, um, a danger that that unfortunately comes to a head. Um, at the uh, in the you know in the most kind of brutal way, and that has consequences that last generations. Um, intergenerational trauma is uh, is psychological, and it's it's. I mean, we we think of these things as being invisible, but they're quite visible even in in how behavior manifests for generations. But in this case, it has also very tangible repercussions. And the second half of the book focuses on on Mika's granddaughter, who actually who grew up in Spain and who comes back to Haiti. Um, as the in in the in the mid 80s, um, as that regime is about to, is crumbling, and so she's witnessing the violent repression uh, that comes from someone who hasn't just come to power, as was the the case in the, when when Mika was uh, was is speaking, but as really someone is trying to hold on to power, and as the vestiges of that of that repression are just are crumbling, um, and so it's a novel about how we hold people to account, um, about who should be held to account. It's a novel also about the 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 women often the people, but often it's women who are collateral damage in these situations of state violence um and who are and who suffer the consequences and who pass on that harm and that suffering to their children to their grandchildren um and the novel as you know Marie city talks about asking questions and trying to raise these questions in readers. And the novel doesn't have any easy, any easy answers, and I think that for writers like Marie City, who are um, who are writing in ways that um, are historically necessary, I would say this is a voice that really needs to be heard. And I can't, I mean, I, I'm biased. I translated it. I love it, but I really, I really hope that that people go out and read this book. Um, the the danger, the the, the the danger, the I guess the the question is always as a writer, it's you have to you have to finish the book at some point. You have to you know there has to be a period at the end, and there has to be things have to be packaged and and ended. And this is something that doesn't end that we see happening over and over in the world. That there's repression of journalists, you know, uh, co constantly even now. And so I think what Marie City manages to do in A Knife in the Sky in Femme Autant des Carnassiers is raise those questions in a way that makes the reader want to find answers, at least even though no answers have ever been found, you know, since. Since humans have been killing each other and trying to control each other, so the 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 imperative to raise those questions and to try to find answers, I think, is as, almost as important as trying to provide the answers um, that, the, that the book, you know, that no but no one can, fictional or otherwise. Yeah. Um, um, so that's, that's kind of a very a very rambling <laughs> overview of, of plot and issues and all kinds of other things. But. No, and no, that was perfect, Katya, because I think it's a very powerful book and also a very important book because as you were saying it, it's still going on today and before we we hit record I was talking with Marie Lee and another thing that I didn't realize that I think the book 
articulate so well is all of the children who are born from rape. And I, I'm obviously very naive, but I had never thought of the impact that goes on for years and years. And uh, Marie Silly, was this something that you had knew right away that you were going to add in the book or did it come as your story evolved? No, 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 no. I wanted to, I wanted that, that's uh, because I am also, when, I, when you're writing, even, even if the root of the story comes from Haiti, but I'm, 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 it's not, a, it's not a, an ethnic history, you know, it's something that happened everywhere. I was, when I was right, while I was writing the book, I was with other journalists who had the same thing happen to them. One of them is Zara Kazemi. She was from Iran. She left Canada to go to work in Iran and she never came back. It was in 2000, the year 2000, uh, they killed her. They arrested her and they tortured her and they killed her. Uh, Ivana Kimwepelo history is something that happened in 1950, the end of 1950. Zara Kazemi the, was the, in the years 2000. And there was a list and list of journalists, you know, who this thing happened to them. And when we talk about the children in Bosnia, they talk in the, in, uh, for so many, well, kids, you know, who are born, so many women um, had this uh, uh, kind of uh, situation, were in that situation. In, Af in uh, some countries in Africa, everywhere, you know, where there is a, uh, a situation of war, women are subjected to that. Uh, and it, it's, it's written in the history of humanity. Yeah. When we look at, at Spain, for example, there are tons of books uh, being written about what happened to women. And one author, a very famous author, uh, uh, Spanish, Spanish author, uh, oh, I forgot her name, unfortunately, wrote about what happened to women in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the jail. Uh, yeah. on the Franco, you know? And um, I read a lot about, uh, about uh, Spanish war and, uh, the, 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 and what happened to women. And I think I, I was also inspired by all, the, all this history. I wanted to talk about, uh, about the, those kids through one of them. Yes. And another thing that I really appreciated about your war, work is, I mean, it, it, there's a lot of darkness. I mean, the brutality of the regime in, in, in Haiti is, it's, it's, just, it's just unthinkable and unimaginable what we uh, human beings do to other human beings. But within all of the darkness, you have this wonderful way through your resilient women of bringing the light into your work and i i just it got me thinking how do you bring lightness in when there's so much darkness like that's just such a wonderful a a a, a wonderful skill like it, it, there's so much going on right now how do you how do you keep the light in i feel that without that light you know there is no life yeah. Uh, I always consider that life is, is like that, you know, there is this dark side and there is also the light. As human beings, we can always make the choice, you know, to choose only the dark side, but we can also tend to that, to that light also, you know, I, and even in our personal life, it's always uh, when we wake up in the morning, which side are we going to? Are we going to, 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 to choose only to see the negativity? or to try to put more light in our life and, in, and also in other people's life. And it's sometimes with only little, little thing that we do for them. Like around the, the, the main character in the book, there is Mika, she's in the darkness, but around her there are all these other women. And I feel that's what I, what I saw in my, in my life also as a child growing up in Haiti. You know, this sorority, this need for women to be, to be there one for each other. Without that light, we would, we would disappear as human beings. And today I think we are engaged in a, in a, in a, in a, in a moment where we have to, to fight as, a, as people to keep the light inside ourselves, but also for other people with little gesture, you know, because we are really in darkness. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I feel. 
and my 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 writing has is always like this you know and i also i always i used to say that i say that at the end of the of the line there is hope there must be hope yeah there must be light yeah 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 we need we need it. Hunan, Hunan asked that question to her grandmother when she goes back to haiti um and speaks and asks you know how exactly she asks exactly that question how do you how did you survive basically which is i think what you're asking you know how do you and she and her answer is that she has good ghosts basically and I'm, I'm paraphrasing but there's you know she talks about how the women she's still surrounded with even though they're no longer with her in physical form um that silence contains multitudes that absence is actually much more present in some way because they're their company without their own the the weight of their own kind of uh corporal or physical you know suffering the the weight of the life that they had to bear with the loss of family members etc and 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 so they're able to just be good you know your ancestors are good company yeah yeah so i think that maybe the, the pithier answer for that is that um a really good way to shed light is also just to burn everything down <laughs> and there's you know there's something there's something to be said for revolution and conflagration and mm. um and that kind of reclaiming as well and i think that there's something with especially with repressive regimes um you, you need to clean house Marie Sali, can you please tell us um, the inspiration behind your your novel, A Knife in the Sky? Uh, the inspiration is a, a woman journalist uh, named Yvonne Hakim Rempel. She was one well, one of the, I think she, maybe she was the only one at this time, you know, the end of 1950. She was a militant also for the cause of women in Haiti, fighting for uh, right to, to vote. Uh, you know, she was a very active woman. And when Duvalier came to power, four months after he came, they, he sent the, the men with the hoods, you know, at night, they called the Tonton Makut. Uh, he started with that, with that system in Haiti. To the house of Ivan Akim Wempel, uh, on that date, I think it's, it was January the 7th. Of course, I wasn't aware of that thing. I was a little girl, maybe three years old. I don't remember, you know, I can remember. But this story, no one ever spoke about it in Haiti. I don't have any, any uh, how could I say that, memory, you know, that someone spoke about her, even in the list of people uh, disappearing, people who disappear under Duvalier, they never talk about Ivana Kim Wempel, in part because she was a woman, you know. And uh, I, I discovered the, the, that history at the end of the uh, 1990 by, uh, by accident like this, you know, in a, in a, in a newspaper. Uh, and uh, I was really in shock when I, when, when I heard that story. I started to talk with people. A lot of people never heard about it. A lot of people forgot about it. A lot of people totally banalized the story. Oh, it was a, it was the husband, you know, uh, that they were after the husband, not after her, but she was the, the, the journalist. And I decided that I had to write about it. I was totally in shock by the silence of, 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 around that story. And I, I started by writing a short story yeah. about, uh, which was published in a, in a magazine, in a, in a literary magazine. And years after I, did, I put myself to write the story of, of, well, I, I can't say that the story of Ivana King Repel, because even if I, I knew a lot about, about a lot of details, but I wanted to, to protect the, this, this uh, how could I say that, this uh, privacy. So there are a lot of facts are real, uh, the date, uh, the, but also I feel that on an ethical point, you know, I don't like to use yeah. uh, a story, you know, as a, well, that, that's where also the, the ability of the writer has to come, you know, to take the real story and to build, uh, to build uh, with your creativity. I, I, I always feel the necessity to leave space for creativity. Mm -hmm. So, uh, there is a lot of uh, things that are exact, but there is also the creativity part. So she was a journalist. 
Yeah. And yeah. With, with along with the creativity, did you feel that she was with you when you were writing the story? Oh, of course, of course. When I write, I need to to give the the person a, a physical aspect, you know, and, and because I knew the picture and also the history of the of the of the child also. Uh, you know, because I am not I'm not totally sure, but there is also stories of uh, rape uh, in that in that in, in in what happened. And in fact, I knew a, a person who knew who knows the family who wanted to to give me more more of the of the real story. At a certain point, I said no. I feel that I had no. I feel that I don't have the right, you know, to deep into the 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 a personal which is something personal you know so i said well i have enough i know enough uh what was important for me is also to to know the names of the people who who were the devalier's hand yeah. the people you know in 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 charge of these things and to and to put their name in in the book because i, I said to myself if they have no no problem you know to go and do these things why why should it be a problem for me to put their name you know the real name yeah. so this was important for me because this is uh, I, I said we have to say no to fear mm -hmm. of course uh, it is a book that people even now in Haiti some of them don't accept but this is not my problem you know this is not my problem because at the same time other people are really happy about the book in fact uh, even in the family, yeah. the, I receive a, a notice of people saying that some people are saying thank you. There is an association in Haiti fighting for the memory of, of what happened. Uh, Fondation de la Mémoire. Uh, they, they are the one who gave me the picture of Yvonne Akimwepel, the picture that was that is in the book. You know the 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 the, the cover, the book cover, and they they are so happy that this book has been published. This book was a need, you know. It was yeah. a necessary book for mo for me as a woman, and also for what happened to women in the time of Duvalier. So, I don't remember your question, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, you you you've answered. Oh no, it was perfect. I just wanted to know if if she was with you when you wrote when oh, you yes. wrote the story. Oh, so yes. yes, 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 it is important for me. I feel the yeah. people around me when I'm writing. Yeah, oh. she was there. That's wonderful. And I'm sure she appreciates her story being told. No? I guess so. Because what, what is sad also about Ivana Kemmerpel is that she, she, she stayed in Haiti after this thing happened mm -hmm. and she never wrote. She never wrote since her death in, in 1980. Can you imagine? No. It's like, they, it's like they, 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 you, have, you are banned. Yeah. She, she could not express herself. She was yeah. muted. She was silenced. You know, she was uh, she was killed uh, many times. You know, yeah. uh, 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 with that silence. And and I mean that's that, that's terrible for anyone. And you just think for a journalist that would just be exactly amplified. You know, just that's amplified. It. Katya, I just think as a translator, there's so much involved. I mean, it's more than just taking the words and from French into English. Could you explain to our viewers, like what's your process when, when you get a book on your desk? Like, how do you go about it? Um, I mean, so you, you read and you reread and you start doing horrible drafts and then the, the drafts progressively less, get less horrible as you go along. The same with, I think, any, any creative process. Um, what was interesting and what was challenging about this book and about working with Maria Sadia, she's a writer who, um, this is not sort of a straight, narrative causal book right i mean there's there's tons of causality and there's tons of the compelling narrative um but mu much of what is taking place on on the level of the sentences and the expressions and the phrases and the the, the scenes is very much unsaid and it's, you know we're, we've talked a lot about a silence silence can be a weapon but it can also be incredibly rich and incredibly full and pregnant and nuanced and this was the case with many of um, with many parts of the book. And so I would find myself going back to Marie Sully and I would say, like, what did you actually mean by this super straightforward, apparently super straightforward sentence? And she would say, actually, you know, um, and every conversation about four or five words turned into this, to a history lesson for me and a conversation about feminism and a conversation about ancestors and a conversation about violence and about, or, you know, or about flowers or about soup or about, yeah. um, and so the, the details, um, 
the details are much more complex than just um, than just the words in this book, especially. It's also a book that's very, I mean, there's, yes, there's descriptions of great, of, of great national and individual trauma, but there's also, it's a book that's very colorful, that's very yes. uh, florid, and I don't mean just that this, you know, in literally, but there's, there is an incredible wealth of kind of texture in the language. And so that was something that was really, that was challenging in a good way, you know, to, to try to convey because I was trying to avoid repetition and trying to find, there's a, Mali City writes in very, I mean, maybe because it's because you were a poet first, Mali City Sipam, and you have such a sense of, you're, you're choosing your words and you're weighing them and many of the, and there's this, this weight of language um, and obviously both, you know, it's written in a colonial language and I'm translating into a colonial language. Um, but beyond that, beneath that, there's something very, uh, very kind of textured and delicious and and delectable about even just using and hearing and writing the words. And so often it felt like I was trying, I was finding my way through a sentence um, in many different versions of it to, write, to finally land on something that in English is, um, is you know, intelligible and readable and about what it's actually about, but that also conveys some of that texture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that that certainly came across as a reader, like you you got the sense, like amongst all the horror, there's Haiti's a beautiful country, you know, that, that beauty, that beauty came through, definitely. Well, I and, think that in my life, beauty is what I see when I open my eyes, you know, I yeah. look for it where it is, you know, the plants, the, the, the sky, you know, the, 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 yeah. the, the, the trees outside, I feel that we need that, you know, and I, uh, I, um, and my writing is also sustained by the by the poetry that I put in it. And without that poetry, I can't be writing. You know, I need it because I the 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 the, the subject sometimes are so hard. But that's the poetry who acts as a filter for me. You know, mm -hmm. to go to that story, and also for the writer. You know, to be able to go to that story. Yeah. And uh, I can't conceive any novel without without the, that poetry. And yeah. there is also the fact that uh, because of that poetry, I write, it's like the, 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 the when I'm writing, it's like a music in my eyes. It, it can be something very, very hard, very difficult, but it comes like there is a, there is a rhythm in my writing, which is uh, essential for me to go through what I want to say, which is uh, sometimes very, very hard, very difficult. It's like that, that story of that man. I, I keep on talking about it, but I, I wrote the, the, the text uh, on the point of view of the mother who lost that son. And, she's, uh, and she starts telling people that before everything, I went to a store to buy a bed for my son. And I was explaining to the people how big my son is today. And, uh, you know, and, and it was like a, a poetry that she was saying, yeah. you know, I, 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 and I put myself in the, at the, in the shoes of that, of that woman. It's like I'm writing in her skin, you know, and yeah. I feel that's, 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 well, that's bring, that's, that's a need for poetry also when you want to, when you want to put word in the, in, 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 in the in the in the heart of someone you know who 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 went through some something so difficult you have to you have to write with with poetry in and yeah, yeah yeah i i didn't realize that the um that the process of 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 translating it sounds like you collaborated a lot the two of you yes is this not always the case? I mean, we were lucky enough to have some time. So we had a, there was actually a residency that both of us participated in, in winter 2021, I guess. So it was in the middle of the pandemic. Everything was kind of weird, but we yeah. were lucky enough to go to the middle of the literature in Quebec City. And so we sat for, you know, for a week and a half or, ten, or so, uh, at two meters apart at the opposite end of the table with a mask and the whole thing. Um, and I was fortunate enough to have access to my city and to be able to, you know, to have those conversations. So it's, uh, that was it was obviously a huge privilege, and I think I think that the book is much more is much has many more layers because of those com because those conversations were were supported and were able to happen. Oh well, it is a wonderful, wonderful book. I'll but I must that say that I must say that it was the first time that I had such a nice collaboration with a with a with a with a translator. You know, I, I wasn't used to that, you know, and it was it was a revelation. And and I feel that working like this with Katya gave me the opportunity to to understand more about 
my work about that book also you know yeah. she yeah Oh, that, that's wonderful. And it's interesting, like two writers coming together. Yeah. <laughs> Merci beaucoup. To be continued, I hope. Oh, yeah. yeah. I hope so, too. I'm looking forward to more books. <laughs> but Merci beaucoup. I have taken up a lot of your time today. It's been such a pleasure to talk with both of you. I'm going to hold up this novel again one more time. So it's Marie Celie Agnon and translated by Katia Grubasek. And excuse my pronunciation. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for watching. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Merci. Au revoir, Christian. Au revoir. Au revoir.